Linda, a pryddai gennyf bws genwch un with Arta and methyn take ma. Well, ag yn das wel dres yn flyddyn ys pasies, ran dew. Crow to Crow and Annual Review, Part 2. Well, as I said last week, it's been an interesting, very full year. We've met so all sorts of interesting people, including some people who've travelled quite a long distance. Not all that far away, but certainly a little farther than one might expect. Uh, came one visitor called Annalise Slutz, who had this to say about her view of Cornwall. I think I'm a little obsessed by Cornwall. It's, Cornwall is just, for me, it's not a, a holiday uh, country. It's just uh, well, a feeling of coming home. Uh, ever since uh, my youth, I was six, I discovered uh, Cornwall only on a map. And, uh, well, it, it was just fascinating and... Um, I, the more I get, I learned about Cornwall. I, I became well, in love with, with Cornwall. Haniol a gar kernel in weth. Well, nip uh, me swodjen keskos na vo recordjes in uh, benzaith and um, keskosilians kernel. A rik dalith and crow de crown agan uh, soap opera bein uh, you hinwis George Hasamantha hagatoma and. Kinza Tolanol and uh, soap opera being uh, George and Samantha. Oh, George. Turn with Uncle Louis Pierre Dom. I can a oh I'm a pistol in Brianson. Oh, Pierre Gal is you, Kalenki. Me a bread of us tonsillitis in the mortar. Slouse. Well, me or so honour, never's Westfit, nag you. Nag you? It's you, me only glue is. And so George and Samantha went on arguing their way merrily through uh, programme after programme. And I very much hope that uh, there'll be a new series of George and Samantha before too long. In uh, July, I recorded an interview with John Chesterfield, Dr John Chesterfield, who at the time was the sword bearer in the Cornish Gorseth, Gorseth Colonel. And he explained exactly what the sword bearer does. During the ceremony, there are three jobs for the sword bearer. Um, he advances down the circle to meet the Lady of Cornwall just before the, or just after the girls have performed their dance, and he says to her, Deragas Kimias Alodis Gracias Niera Voncia, by your leave, gracious lady, we will go forward. And she replies, Ilhenrak Hamirsil. Um, go on and I will follow. He then precedes her up the circle to the Grand Bard where she presents the Grand Bard with her offering of, of fruit and flowers and, and so on. Well, of course, what I didn't know at the time when I was interviewing uh, John Chesterfield was that he was about to be elected the new Grand Bard of Cornwall. A piece of fortuitous journalism, if you like. Hagath o yn weth un mis gwrtheryn a rwy'n dalaeth an cyfryn fi'n yn cyfryn ystor yn ieith gyrniog. Hag o reis ddyn gan Graham Sandercock nebiw cydorio'r cyswn tafas gyrniog. And we began with the most obvious question of all, where did Cornish come from? Well, we can go a long way back and uh, find the links with other languages. Originally, of course, all the Celtic languages, and in fact all the European languages, originated in Central Europe. Um, as far as the British context goes, uh, of course, perhaps not everybody realises this, but the, the language spoken by the ancient Britons in Roman times was a direct um, forefather, if you like, of, of the Cornish language. It was a Celtic Brythonic language spoken in Cornwall, Wales, the whole of England, and parts of southern Scotland as well. And uh, later on, with the incursions and invasions of the English and Germanic peoples from Europe, uh, the Brythonic language got broken up into bits and geographically separated. 
That's an important point, that you're saying Cornish is much older than English, and not only that, covered the whole of the British Isles before English arrived. Yes, that's right. Um, it's certainly older than English on, in mainland Britain. About the year, well, in about the 6th century, as the uh, English peoples moved westward, um, there were a series of battles around uh, Somerset, which effectively separated what's now become Wales and Cornwall. So from that date, the Welsh language and the Cornish language have developed separately, although to, to a large extent along parallel lines. They came from exactly the same route, were identical at that stage, and have diverged gradually over those, what, 1,500 years or so. And that's why Cornish and Welsh are still so similar to this. Yes, um, people who know Cornish or Welsh well um, may not be able to mutually understand each other completely, but they will certainly pick out words. And uh, in writing, certainly the differences are, are much easier to see. So, from ancient history to modern times, and uh, to some very interesting developments, as I mentioned last week, the connections between Cornwall and Australia have featured quite large in Cordacroan, not least, of course, the extraordinary phenomenon of quite a few Australians learning to speak Cornish. And one of them, a very enterprising and dapper and interesting lady, called Lillian James, actually came to Cornwall for the first time ever in her life, and I spoke with her in Camborne. O Tidu, Seaworth Callington, Nanju Lies Blason. Ms. Ms. Tio Organisin, Colonel for in Australia. Trigis in Munta. So Tio Trigis in Munta, Tio Ganisin in Australia, Tio Australic in Tien. You're, you're entirely Australian. You're, you're not. The Weir. The Weir. The Weir. <laughs> a proud bull centre. Proud of being Australian, I expect. Yeah. Ms. Yeah. Pure proud. <laughs> Tio Gaus Kanui. You speak Cornish. This will seem very, very strange to uh, a lot of Cornish people. They'll be astonished at the idea that somebody can speak uh, quite reasonable Cornish who lives the other side of the world. My ancestors came from Cornwall, from Callington, on my father's side, and on my mother's side from Mullion. And a Cornish class started in Adelaide, and I was very interested to learn the language. Well, Hannah Ordnance can the the broader. My broader, the same as Ron Dor, yeah. Ron, you the broader. And you Hannah Greer? Yes. Ron, you and Broder. Yeah. Ha in with and Discajo. Oh, he's the teacher as well. So how long have you actually been learning Cornish then? Three lessons. Three years. Me, a a sayer, pure Calais. You've tried very hard. Yeah, yeah. The weird. Yeah. In, in, in English now, um, or Australian, I guess I should say. Um, it's quite extraordinary, isn't it, the interest in Cornish uh, matters generally in that part of Australia. The interest in Cornish started the late 1800s in South Australia. In, I think, 1890. In 1990, it'll be a hundred years birthday the centenary to be held in Adelaide. Adelaide is the oldest Cornish association in Australia. What sort of things actually happen and take place then? We have speakers. Uh, one night we had a quiz, a Cornish quiz, which was very interesting. The whole theme is around, is around Cornwall. And when we have visitors from Cornwall, they come to speak to us and everybody is very interested in the speakers. We may have a group, a singing group, and they will come and sing to us. We have, have lots of activities, but I suppose our main, our main thing is the Canuic Lawenda at Munta, and that lasts the whole weekend. That's held every alternate year, and the year in between, there's a big celebration at Ballarat, and this year they had the, pro the, the proclamation of the Gorsairs, oh, yeah. or, yeah. or the gathering of the Gorsairs yeah. there, yeah. Uh, which was which was absolutely mar marvellous. Yeah. And Dennis, there's going to be another in 1989, I gather. There's going to be one at Moonton, yes, indeed. Yeah. indeed. Now, is this the first time that you've actually been to Cornwall? This is my first time. It is? Yes. And, and so we are indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your reaction then? Oh, we, we just, we're just overwhelmed with Cornwall. We had no idea that... Um, 
the places were so big, we thought we thought that they were little villages. And it's the beauty of Cornwall that, that's striking us. And the friendliness of the people. Well, that's good. Yes. Yeah. And it's, uh, well, it's a, it's a pleasure and an honour to meet you. And quite extraordinary to be talking Cornish to somebody who comes from the other side of the globe. One day I expect there'll be Cornishmen talking to other Cornish speakers on Mars. It wouldn't be at all surprised. Are you going to give a conscience at Chonstadis? Chonstadis. That was uh, Lillian James. And of course, uh, she mentioned the fact that there is going to be a Gorseth proclamation in Munta in the spring of 1989. Uh, and that led us in a little later on to the news about the Carenza singers who are hoping to actually go and sing as part of that uh, Luenda Carnuek. Uh, sorry, Kernuek Luendo, they say, um, the, the Cornish festival held in uh, South Australia. Well, as well as the Carenza singers and their beautiful music, there's been a, a, a veritable feast of music um, during the year on Cordo Cron, and no time really to play you more than just the uh, briefest extract of one or two pieces that I particularly enjoyed. One was the um, resurrected or rediscovered Shepherd of Israel, the beautiful cantata by Thomas Merritt. I express then, and I express again now, the hope that this will certainly become a much more frequently and widely performed work in the Cornish calendar. <laughs> Wonderful stuff, I think, and I certainly hope that will be resurrected and, and performed very widely. And uh, as well as that, of course, there were the Crenza singers themselves, there was that magnificent police choir concert that I went to with all those uh, marvellous spirited pieces. And from that police choir, you may remember that I played you um, part of a solo by Catherine Pierce singing Tell Me Lovely Shepherd, and uh, this really is beautiful.
Catherine Pierce. Wasn't that lovely? Well, out of we. Here a blizzard pure busy. It's been a very busy year. I have doubt this, a fifth and visit as a half more busy. I have a fifth and new all of some vetia. I go clappy carnuic arta dethanus, me usure. Well, business is Satan, me aragas gullis, and me are a veral de lovi papris, pap Satan. Do you get a wheel? God be with you all. Do you get a wheel?